not, so nope. we are live. Not even a mute, huh? No. <coughs> so, yeah. Let me pull up. So Jason Wisniewski is not here. Tony Patiglio took his place. That's what it was? Okay. Hello and welcome to the uh, 35th anniversary of the Wycliffe INA Challenge Cup of Bocce brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we are underway with play in our first inning. And we got uh, two teams today. And uh, we'll get a local team, Trapepi Consulting, which uh, consists of uh, Pete Melorano, uh Doug Carter, Tim Trapepi, and Natal Scala. And then we have uh, Palazzo 777, Luch. And Palazzo 77 has uh, Jose Bato, Mike. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you got Mario Federico. That's right. Uh, Jason Wisniewski was going to play, but he's not playing. And uh, Tony Patiglio took his place. And then Pat Pezen, of course, who's the captain of Toronto 777. So right now we're in the, uh, like I said, the uh, the first inning of play. And it looks like uh, Red has got the point, I believe. We are looking at this uh, from the cameras that are set up in the court. Toronto 777, they've been here many, many times. Uh, you'll see their name all over the trophy. I don't know exactly how many, but uh, they've, been, they've done this before. The last time they won was in 2013. Yeah, and, 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 and how many times are they listed on that roster? Do you find how many times they're there since, uh, what, 84? That was a couple times. One, two. That's the winners, but I know they've been in the finals many times. Yeah, they're usually a top 10 team every year. They're usually in this situation a lot of times. I think that's, well, it's because all the cold weather up there. That's all these guys do is play indoor <laughs> <Yes>. bocce. <laughs> yeah, like it's nice and warm here. All right, yes. Here's Jose Bado. Rolling in for point. Jose Bado is uh, supposedly the uh, uh, second-rated player in the country, uh, from what I have heard from people. And he does play like it. All right, so we're going to see. Uh, there's a shot of the scoreboard there. Now, is this what's online here? Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah, we haven't, haven't, seen just, they haven't seen an update in the score yet. I'm not sure who scored there. Yeah, we're looking for the score, just can't seem to find it. 
Well, well actually, Toronto scored so because they were throwing the Pauline first, so we know that. I don't know if it was one, two. It was probably one. All right, then they, they left the ball about four and a half, five feet short. Here comes uh, Pete Melarano with his point ball. He rolls by probably about uh, three feet long, two and a half, three feet long. A little long. we got to watch these, these players. This court is a little bit fast. Uh, I know the players have been playing all weekend, but the court can be faster depending on how some things go. We've got to watch and, uh, how the pointing goes and see. Plaza's a little short, but Pete went a little bit long here, so we'll see what happens next. Looks like Plaza's about to point this one. And that's probably exactly what happened. Pete probably saw that ball end up short and said, okay, I don't want to be short like that and put a little more pepper on it. Oh, great right. ball. Pat Pezen uh, throws in a point ball probably within six inches. Uh, probably less than that. So let's see. It's going to be Doug Carter going for the hit. To hit it out. And Doug oh, hits the Pauline. All right. And right now the Pauline's on the back left wall, back left corner. And it looks like uh, they have two right now. Two in it. And that's talking about uh, Trepepe Consulting. Bob, what are you thinking here? You think back and forth or off the sidewall? I, I'm thinking off the sidewall. Just a nice soft roll, point speed, sidewall, back wall, and there it is. There's sidewall, there's back wall, and Perfect. beautiful ball. Wow. He's right on the Pauline. They're kissing. That's exactly the play I would have, I would have called to. Now, these boards, Luch, I, I don't know if these boards are as sensitive as some others, mm -hmm. you know, where the... Uh, the ball rolls off, no matter how slow or fast you throw the ball. But these seem to be pretty good. Because that ball hung around. All right, Oof. Natal Scala just hit that uh, red ball. and uh, But red kind of hung around near the Pauline. I don't think he's happy about that shot. He just nipped it. The Pauline left and couldn't get it done on that one. See, now they're probably going to go back wall, Luch, to the right, back and forth let that ball pop out and get in behind the red ball. I really can't tell how far away from the back wall the uh, the Pauline or the or Toronto's uh, red ball is. There's a little huddle in center court here. Natal putting his arm around uh, Tim Trepepe in the red. Pete Melarano's in the blue. I think I'll have one of these fries. I got a perfect face for radio, I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're still discussing this next shot. It's important. Every shot in a finals game is important. There goes Tim Trepepe with the throw. Ooh. It's the Pauline over to the green. Great shot. Wow. Beautiful. Very impressive by Tim Trepepe. I know that'll make uh, Pete very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The green ball is laying on it. On the Pauline. Uh, there's another green ball to the right about, what, 10 inches away. And another one to the left, a uh, foot and a half away. Well, it's going to be tough to overcome this. Jose Bottos, uh, I believe, is the only ball back. Yeah, it is. So you think you got to point this one and play some defense, correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't see hitting this because typically on that last ball, you don't want to you don't want to hit because you just don't know what's going to happen. But in this situation, I, you may not have a choice. I mean, right now they have three as it is. And you take your chances with rolling in and coming up short. Uh, maybe just take two away and let them end up with one. It's a tough decision. All right, discussion's over. Jose's ready. Oh, he's shooting it. Okay. Uh, we still got three. That's, that's three green. Jose Bottle doesn't miss that often. Wow, Luch. no, that's that's very unrare of him. It is kind of rare for Jose. They still haven't put those points up yet. Are they not keeping score this game? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's well, 
Oh, there it is. They just there you go. Four to one. All right, uh, four to one. Trepepi Consulting over Palazzo, seven seven seven. That was a huge inning by them. It was. That was a Tim had a great shot. And even after the towels kind of near miss, I thought, mm -hmm. uh oh, this may be a little trouble. But oh, here's Jose again. Here's Jose to hit. Hit that go. one square, and now it's red point. Uh, so it's Palazzo's point, they're, but they're, you know, a good eight feet away. Here comes Tim Trepepe with his point ball. Down to Pauline. What a Great shot. Point. Wow. What a shot by Tim Trepepe. Tim Trepepe's come a long way in the last couple of years. Plays well. All right, so this must be Tony Patilio, or Patiglio in America. <laughs> Here comes Tony's shot to get Tim out. Ooh, Tony misses left. That is a tough miss right there, Bob. That is, uh, that hurts. That hurts in a game like this. You said a shot like two, that really just kills your strategy too, going forward. Well, yeah, it's uh, it, it does change what you need to do here. Now, I mean, you got to play a little defense with this. Uh, you take another shot and miss, you're in big trouble, and you already you just gave up three. Right, right. It's four one. You don't want to seem to get too out of hand. Yeah, and I, it, you already have balls on the back, right? So, uh, y you know, so if if, if uh, Trepepe wants to end up hitting their ball in the Pauline to take their ball in the Pauline to the back you know at some point once Toronto's done rolling at least Palazzo does have a, a ball back there to protect them from that happening oh, here comes my brother coming in from uh, Arizona to do some business in Cleveland just happened to come at bocce time here's the throw there's the pointing in this one he's gonna get a bump on it oh no oh, he, not even close no, way off to the left. He's got about four feet. There's brother Greg. Yeah. Yeah, Toronto's in uh, big trouble here. Here comes Pat Pezen's role. We'll try and play some defense here. All right, he got it there, but it's in a spot where it can be hit without uh, taking out that point ball of... Uh, Oh, yeah, he laid it out there just for Todd Carter to hit perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like there could be some discussion down there. Oh, well, I think clear hit, no? I, I would think so, too, and I'm sure they're worried about the ricochet you know, messing this whole thing up. I mean, obviously, the play is to hit that red ball out. You come in for another, you know, three-pointer, you know, two more points here and walk away. But if you get a bad ricochet. Right, and Doug is known for his hard shots. Yeah, he is. One of the hardest hitters in the area. Doug uh, is definitely one of the better hitters. So if you've never been to uh, the Wycliffe Italian American Club for this bocce tournament, um, you got to make sure you get here. It's a great weekend. The weather couldn't have been any more perfect. Uh, all the courts are covered. I don't know if you, can, if you can see that in camera land anywhere. and You really can't, but got nine covered courts, covered pavilion, music all weekend long, food, beer, wine. It's all here. So one of these, uh, one of these years, make sure you get down here and uh, take a look for yourself. I think you'll enjoy it. This venue is very similar, Luciano, as you now know, to Rome, New York. Yes. We go play that big tournament. Small towns like Wycliffe. Mm -hmm. This is where I grew up. And uh, and Rome is the same way. Same small town feel. Doug missed. Oof. He's not happy about that one. No, Doug uh, kicked something off the, the top board there. What's important, too, is this tournament is the same time every year. The weekend before Labor Day tournament, 102 teams this year, great time. 
102, 102 men's teams, and then another 13 women's teams. 13 women's teams we also watched today, which I believe a team from Youngstown took home the trophy uh, against the local team. All right, there it is. Trepepe Tre Consulting is uh, leading the charge right now, Luch, 5 to 1 over uh, Toronto's Palazzo 777. Um, but Palazzo never just goes away, do they? No, they do not. we got to remember also, Trepepe needs to beat them twice to win the championship. That's a good point, Luch. Oh, look at Pete. Wow. I think Pete just put it on the Pauline. Because I can't see the Pauline, so I'm assuming that they're kissing. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful ball. Pete has pointed really, really well today. It's rare that he's off. Here comes Jose with the hit. He did hit it. It's now red point. A lot of room, though. A lot of room to come in for uh, Tim Trepepe. If I'm not mistaken, uh, everyone on uh, Trepepe Consulting is from is local, except Natal Scala in the black. I believe he's from Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken. His dad, Felice, is uh, also a, he also plays with Pete Melarano's brother Tony, and um, so father and son were in the tournament. Well, and it's another beautiful day for the uh, Pat O'Brien Chevrolet Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. Once again, here in uh, Little Wycliffe, Ohio. Oof. All right, there's a point. That ball didn't come off that wall. I think he wanted to hit that back wall and come off a little bit. It's stuck right there. But again, now in some other courts, that ball floats out. Right. But not, uh, not everybody knows that the balls aren't coming off. All right, so Jose Bono made a good hit. Unfortunately, his ball ended up probably uh, four or five feet away. Tim Trepepe rolled in to the corner. You think about just laying on that ball, right? Just point speed to the back wall, lay on that ball, team well, comes forward a little bit. There's times where you, you hit back wall and let it pop out. So you hit to the left of the ball lane, not necessarily in the corner. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you roll that wrong and you come off and you hit to the left of the green ball, your ball is going to keep on going. Right. You know? Um, so let's see what they do. Here comes uh, Pat Peasant's shot. He does go back and forth and takes the point. There's the shot. So now, you know, do you, do you duplicate that shot? Looks like Natal uh, Scala is going to you know, maybe do the same shot, but maybe he comes after that red ball. Problem is, if he hits it two squares, it's going to go back and come back again. And his ball takes off. I would go back and forth again. I think Doug Carter's even saying the same thing. A right, little more, a uh, little huddling up here. Yeah, at this point in stage in the game, every shot is crucial. You'll see teams take their good you know, time figuring out oh, yeah. what, what, sh what should we do at this point. Yeah, there's uh, no time clock, but although I wish there were in some games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not this game. Here goes Natal's shot. He's doing the same way. Ooh, <laughs> that was he, close. Did he get it? Can't tell. They have to may have, may have to measure this. No, I guess not. Because Pete's talking about the next shot, so it appears that uh, Toronto still it, it still holds point. Yeah, definitely. Here comes Doug's shot. Now Doug's going to try and roll on that red ball now. But it's a tough shot. It's hard to do. He's got it. That's a great shot. Not easy to do. Doug's been pointing well today, too, Luch. I've uh, watched some of Doug's points in his last game against ABB Contractors, who uh, took third place this year. Um, and, and Doug pointed real well. And I say that because Doug's, Doug's a hitter, and there are times when the real good hitters aren't as good a pointer. But uh, we have a lot of guys who do both pretty well. Little shot of the crowd there, enjoying the game. Oh. I don't know if it popped out 
too far or not? Everybody, everybody's going back and forth on this. Just going down that corner is tough to do. So with uh, Lucio Luciano, the Senzi. Senzi, yes. And uh, Bob Galise, we're bringing you this uh, Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce, brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet here in Wycliffe, Ohio, on this gorgeous Sunday. It's actually the warmest day of the whole weekend. It's been a gorgeous weekend. A little humid today. I don't know if they've... Uh, we got an indication of who, who holds that point. I'm, I'm not sure. Jose Bato is going down to take a look. It's definitely a hot one out here in Wakeworth. You got to think these two teams have been going all day long, also. That's right. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Pete started this morning at what nine o'clock or right. something. Right. Especially for Trapepe, they've had to play double the games today. Exactly. They are in the losers bracket. Keeping in mind, as Luciano pointed out early, that uh, Trapepe Consulting is coming out of the losers bracket, which means that if they win the first game, they will have to play again. Because then, of course, Toronto finally gets their first loss. We got two on that one, Bob. All right, so we got two. Five to three now, Trapepe Consulting. That was uh, a big inning for them right there. It is. It was a big inning. Because that was a tough corner. But five to three, Trapepe leading Toronto's Palazzo 777. All right, Toronto's point ball is, I don't even see his ball, is he short? He must really be short. I don't even see the ball coming into the picture. There's yeah, that's Pete. not good if you can't see uh, the ball in the picture. Did Pete hit it too? Oh boy. What happened here? That's a miscue right there, Bob. Boy, yeah, Pete's not gonna be happy with himself on that no, one. Oh, he looks uh, a little upset on that one. Pete doesn't do that often, I'll tell you that much. Here comes Tim Trapepe's, uh Follow up. Oh, he catches the ball lean. Ooh, that ball would have been probably five, six feet long. Great pickup by Tim. Well, Tim probably saw all these other balls, you know, ending up, I don't know, five, six feet short because you still can't see the first two balls that were thrown. And uh, he said, okay, I don't want to be short. And he gave a little more pepper. And luckily, the uh, the lead weights we use as Paul Leans <laughs> <laughs> stopped the ball. <clears throat> but good, good point for Tim. All right, Jose's looking at the uh, the ball Tim just threw. He's going to hit it out of there. Here's his throw. Great shot by Jose as usual. They want to measure it. They want to take a mage. There are the two balls right there. Ah, there they are. Look how short they were. Is that tape long enough? <laughs> Jose shot the ball. I'm wondering if he nudged it a little bit. That's why they're measuring. Uh, I went, well, you could be right. We couldn't see that in the, uh, the video, but it must be close because they're taking a good old time. It's got to be close. This is it. Let's see. It must be Toronto's point right now. Skull one short too. Did he really? Straight. Here goes Doug Carter next. Too long on that one.
kind of a mind game right there. You got three balls that went short. Ouch. Doug tried to push a little bit too hard, and he, he's way too long on that one. Wow. Now Palazzo with two balls in the back now will try to capitalize on this. It should be a 5-5 game after this uh, inning. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty rough inning there. This could be three right here. So it was three? Yeah, three on that one for so Palazzo. So it's going to be 6-5 now. Taking their first lead of the game. Yes, they have. That was a tough inning for Trepepe Consulting, but Palazzo took advantage. And Palazzo's on a 5-0 run right now. Told you, they never go away. All right, here's uh, Toronto's point ball. It's about, uh, I don't know, 12, 14 inches to the right. It's a good point ball. Doug's going to hit. Doug Carter getting ready to hit. Ooh. Right through the upright there, Bob. Yeah, he just uh, got a field goal there. Boy, he missed it. I know Doug's not happy with himself. Mm -hmm. He's probably still thinking about that last ball he just pointed, you know, in the last inning, and that's, uh, you got to let go of that stuff. But everybody misses every now and again. That's, it's going to happen. Well, we all knew this game wasn't going to be a blowout. No. Nope. That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> all right, here comes uh, Pete's. They decide to just point it. Pete's long. <laughs> yeah, he's way long. And that last ball that Pete threw just came into play here again because he was so short on the last one. So, again. So, he's probably thinking, i got to push it a little bit right. on this one. He gave it a little long. Uh, you know, he long-armed it. And, uh-oh. That's long, too. Oh, uh, this is trouble. All right, so Tim Trepepe's uh, attempt to beat Toronto's point ball, which is about 14 inches to the right of the Pauline, uh, also went long. And uh, if he'd have grabbed the Pauline, that would have been a big win. It definitely went out there. Yeah, for uh, Trepepe. Let's see what Skull can do here. Oh, oh Natalva comes in. Gets inside Natal there. comes in. All right, good point ball, Natal. Now, if they hit that, now, Jose's good. Well, normally, Jose can hit this ball without touching his own ball. He's one of the few here that can do that. Let's see what happens. Jose's winding up, and here she goes. Got wow, it. beautiful and shot by Jose. And he hung around. Wow. Mamma mia. Yeah, when these... Uh, when these guys start doing this, their confidence just goes up tenfold. The crowd definitely enjoyed that one, too. Yeah, yeah they did. Ooh, Pat Peasant comes in way short. Oh, you got to capitalize on that. Wow. Now, Trepepe has thrown all their balls. And here comes Toronto's last ball in to hopefully get three. And it's going off the wall here. And there it is. Three. We got a 9-5 game here. Yeah. Plots are taking the lead. So that's uh, two threes in a row. That's a quick six. So now that 5-0 leads now to an 8-0 lead right now, an 8-0 run. 8-0 run, yeah. Wow. All right. Team Trepepe is, uh, Trepepe Consulting is going to have to uh, regroup on this. Minute regroup, here. collect themselves, let go of the stuff that uh, they haven't done right. And just play, just play how they know how to play. They'll be fine. Looks like Palazzo went short on that one. Pete a little bit long. Oh my, yeah, Pete threw long. See, even that short ball before is still kind of coming into play here. Now you didn't want to be short again. But luckily, Palazzo you know, threw way short. This is going to be a simple roll in. They're probably talking about, do I play on the ball? The red ball on the wall, do I want to bring that in? Or do I just go for my point? It's probably the discussion, I would think. Here comes Pat Pezen. That looks hard, too. No, okay, I couldn't tell. Nice ball by okay, Pat. Okay, yeah. He's probably within, what, a uh, foot and a half? Maybe less? Bocci, of course, looked great today, didn't they, uh, Luch? Oh, beautiful. 
beautiful well shot by Doug. Yeah, the courts have looked awesome today. You know, great appreciation towards the Wickliffe INA members who have worked on the courts all weekend long. Uh, they've been playing great and rolling awesome. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a year long love affair with this uh, tournament. It's a, it's a lot to get prepared for, and it's a lot to do as the tournament's going on. And the guys have done a great job getting the courts prepared and, and uh, continuing to prepare them during the games. All right, it appears that uh, well, Palazzo definitely holds point. I don't know if it's one or two though. I think it's two points. It looks like. Looks like he just pumped it just enough to get in. Here goes Tim Trapepe. That's long. Oof. Boy, all of a sudden they just they lost their range. Yeah. I mean they were playing so so well up to this point. He might have taken one away though. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Where they have uh, Natal uh, still left for Trapepe Consulting. Yeah. So they're kind of going over. Yeah, he's going to put it against the wall. Do a bank shot. Here it comes. He hit the foot. Hit the tar the, ball, oh. the ball went right back to the wall. Did not. Not enough off. break off that wall. He hit the line right. That ball just did not pop off. That's a shame. Those are the ones that kind of get under your skin a little bit. Okay, I hit my mark. I had the good speed, and the ball just wouldn't pop off. All right, now Toronto's going to have a little discussion about what they're going to do here. I mean, but it doesn't look like anything other than just rolling in. All right, there, uh, here comes Jose. Jose is also an excellent pointer. He's just an all-around player. And a great guy, by the way. There it is. Great ball. All right, live stream sponsored by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. So if you're joining, uh, if you're enjoying this live stream, uh, we want to thank Pat O'Brien Chevrolet for uh, sponsoring it and uh, allowing us to uh, to add this to our venue, Luch. This is this kind of cool. This is new this year. This uh, I know they've had the video, but not the commentary. And maybe next year they won't have a commentary because we're, we're doing this so poorly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll hopefully get our jobs next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Toronto throws up. They throw their ball up. And uh, not a bad point. Probably about 14, 15 inches. Uh, Doug's going to hit. Call. Pete's calling for uh, Doug to hit this out, which is probably a good call, by the way. They've been struggling with pointing the last couple of innings. It's a 10 0 run right here, and it's 11 5. You got to set the bleeding somehow. Yeah. 11 5 in uh, favor of uh, the team from Toronto, Palazzo 777. Here comes Pete Melarano's uh, point ball. Aha. There we go. Pete got dialed back in. There you go, Pete. Very nice. Nicely done. Bravo, as they say. All right. And Jose Bono once again is going to uh, put the target on that ball. Stuck another one. Wow. <laughs> he has done that time and time again all weekend long. He has, yeah. He has. Son of a gun. Not that we're homies here, but uh, we are. <laughs> that was a great shot, Jose. I don't care where you're from. That's a great shot. So now i got to decide what uh, you know, they want to hit. Do they want to point? Well, it looks like Natal Scala is going to hit this ball. All right, he got it, and they still held point. He didn't get it out of there far enough. Not enough. Just a clip shot off the left side. Yeah, that's that's the downside. If he'd have cleared the ball out and held point for team uh, or for uh, Trapepe, but now Toronto still has uh, two balls back. Do they not lose? Am I wrong? They lose track. Looks at like two in the back. Yes. 
Yeah, so they have two balls back yet. That peasant is going to point. If the point ball is not uh, very close right now. Okay, there's uh, one more for Toronto. Those are the ones you don't have to really be careful with. Now it's another yeah. big inning by Palazzo again. Yeah, it's another two. Games are up to 14, folks, I believe, unless it's 16. Oh, the championship, Bob, is a 16. 16, now. that's mm -hmm. right. I sit corrected. Yeah, all weekend long, winner's bracket, loser's bracket was to 14. And the championship, they let it go to 16. All right. So this should be, uh, make this 13 to 5, correct? If, if, if it's the two. I'm not sure that last ball made it in. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it looks like yeah. there's only two on that one. So it's 13 to 5, Palazzo. So they got the two there. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, man, it's, it's tough to come back on this team. It's really tough. We gotta go one inning at a time. You need to get the Pelin back is the most important thing. Yeah, he just threw Toronto just threw the ball, their point ball really long. And Pete just threw kind of short. I don't know if he got it or not. Pete's a pretty competitive guy, Luch, and uh, when he starts falling behind, um, you know, you think about it too much sometimes and it kind of messes with your game a little bit, but usually doesn't mess with Pete too long. He's a great guy, great player. Here comes Jose to hit Pete. And if he sticks another one. Come wow. on. Along. Jose sticks another one. That's unbelievable. I mean, I haven't seen that many stuck balls on these courts except from him. It's almost guaranteed he's going to hit it every time. Yeah. <sighs> Ooh. All right, Tim's ball just skinned around the outside of Toronto's point ball, which is three and a half feet away and it looks like uh, Trepepe has point that they're going to measure it up yeah so the uh, Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce you know nine nine great courts uh, great group of guys that put this uh, event on at, uh, they just really care they want everybody having a great experience here and it's just not throwing up tents and turning on some hot dogs, you know, Luch? Oh, no, definitely not. I mean, they have had a lot of stuff going on this weekend, just besides the bocce, with the bands playing, they have food venues. We had General Terry here today, a magician here also. Right. A lot of stuff going on the weekend besides the bocce tournament. I mean, you had the people selling the clothes over here, cigars, um, and, and, and other Italian trinkets. Um, it's, just a, it's just an overall great time. Plenty of parking. So thanks once again to uh, Pat O'Brien for your sponsorship. It's uh, been much appreciated, as you well know. All right, Toronto, uh, I think this is Tony Patilio. He's coming up to hit. He does hit Tim out. So now Toronto's got two. <clears throat> but there's a lot of room, a lot of room to come in. See, with this kind of lead now, they don't have to. That was the right play to hit it out. I mean, right. It's a lot of flexibility when you're up this much. Yeah. There's the scoreboard, 13-5. All right. So Natal uh, put a nice ball in. They're going to hit it out. I would think. Here's Pat Pezen. Flew right out of the court. Yeah, well, you know what? He does that underhand uh, spocking, and that ball just got on top of that Pauline and went up. Oh, my God. Everyone's all right over there. They may end up with a lump on their leg like me. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that cameraman when you need him? You want one of these? Don't sit there. I got cracked about three years ago, and the bump from it is still there. It was one of Luciano's balls. <laughs> He's a little crazier back then. <laughs> Let's see what Doug does here. 
just trying to figure out what he wants to do. I mean, you gotta, it's, 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 it's tough. Being down this much, you gotta figure out a way to get back in the game. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, that's, it's a tough road to hoe. Is this my, must be, huh? Well, I'm thinking here, just rolling for the one, get the plane back in your hand and go from there. Where's the Pauline Leach? What, what am I missing? Oh, there it is. There to it is. the right, yes. Yeah. Okay. When Pat hit it, it flew a little bit to That's the right. That's right. Yeah, his ball went out and cracked somebody in the leg or whatever. Pauline went to the right. It looks like your puppies, they might be throwing the Pauline to the back wall, though. Well, at this point, when you're down 13-5, to 5, why not? Well, again, sometimes you just got to go for the dust, though. No guts, no glory. <laughs> Just anything to spark, you know, spark your team back that, up, get that, the momentum back going, anything. That's get you exactly going. what it is, yeah. Get that spark. That's a good way to put it, Luch. So, you know, I, I don't know if Doug's going to hit it straight on, if he's going to, you know, bank it off the wall, because, you know, uh, Trepepe's got three green balls back there. You're down 13 to 5. You haven't been playing that well. Yeah, this is the spark they need right now. Come on, Doug. Here comes Mr. Carte. Oh, he's going to point. I'm surprised. I said, okay, let's just take the one. Ah. Now, if we were playing on Friday night or Sunday night over at Mayfield Park, Pete would have went after that ball. <laughs> <laughs> but when you got eight grand... We're on the line. Yeah, it's not a bad move. You know, just get the point back in the hand, let Pete do his thing, and go from there. Matter of fact, Luch, uh, I know first place is 8000 What's second and third place payouts? Do you, do you have it on your uh, info there? I believe it's around the 3000 mark. Uh, Luch is going to look it up in the program. But I think uh, this year's payout was uh, was raised. And I think I think total prize money is about twenty grand, I believe. All right, not a bad ball by Pete Melarano for Trepepe Consulting. Uh, Pete's probably uh, eh, probably twenty inches away. So they got uh, they got uh, Toronto thinking about this a little bit. This you know thinking okay we don't want we don't want to give these guys too much room to come back. No, if, if your team Palazzo, you're thinking we got to finish this quickly. We don't want any you no know, momentum coming after us. We got to we got to end this quickly as possible. Let's try to get our points and end it. Yeah, so I think they're I think they're debating. Do we point this or do we hit it? And the way Jose Bottle hits and sticks, I, <laughs> that's a weapon you got to use. <laughs> You know, you, you're, you got someone down 13 to 5. You, you got to put your, your foot on their throat. I don't know. That may be Trepepe point. Maybe. No, maybe not. Looks like Palazzo has it on that one. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Pete's calling for a, a point ball here. Let's see what Tim could do here. Here comes Tim Trepepe. Easy. Easy. He lays in front of Toronto's red ball and takes the point away. You can hear the crowd sigh after that one. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing the old uh, air through the teeth suck in. All right, <laughs> holding your breath on that one. He got it, though. Okay. And again, you know, maybe this is that spark they needed. Get a point. You know, get another one here. Just kind of keep chipping away. Then get maybe a three. Because, again, when you're up this big, you're relaxed. Right. You're not pressing. All right, here comes Toronto's point ball. And it looks like a good one. It is. It's a good one. It's good enough for point. Doug, Just tailed off a little bit towards the end there. Doug Carter's going to hit, I'm assuming. Or Natal. Natal's going to hit. Yeah, once again, Natal Scala, uh, I believe from Connecticut, plays on uh, plays with Pete in these uh, bigger tournaments. Nice guy. Is he short? I believe so. Fourth. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't think in he here. made it in there. He had his hand in the air, though. I, he, that means we got it. Oh, Ollie's going to look. Oliver Marcon. Uh, one of the... Today's officials. <laughs> yeah, well, one of today's officials and uh, has a big part in running the bracket board um, for the last, geez, 10 years or whatever. I mean, it's been a long, long time. I mean, you guys got to remember, these guys are here from 7 in the morning, 7.30 in the morning till 12, 1, 2 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah, it's an all-day event, three days out of the weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're going all day. So you got uh, Vince Continenza and Paul DeSico here all day long. And I'm sure it's pretty stressful. All right, Doug hit Ooh, and came back. Uh, did he hold it? Because the red ball came back with it. I can't tell. But Doug had a nice hit there. Sometimes that's the, you know, sometimes those ricochets and the way balls balls come back. Like at Alta House, when you play in Little Italy, sometimes you miss a ball when you're hitting. Hits the back wall and comes back eight oh, feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen balls come back all the way to half court. Right. And then I've seen balls come back six, seven feet and take point. <laughs> yes. So they miss and get rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it must be uh, Trepepe's, well... No, oh, Trepepe's out of balls, though. I don't know who's got the point here. Uh-oh. Ooh, hit the Pauline. Ooh, but it went over to the red there. Isn't that a red over here? The right corner? I believe it is. Yeah. It is, Bob. They only need one more, and this is wide open. Uh, oh, they need, they need three more, don't they? They're 16. They got uh, one there. Pat Pezen's ball is uh, still left behind for Toronto. All he's got to do is throw against the back wall. See, now what they're talking about now is, do we want Pat to come off the wall hard, hit the side wall, and then hit one of their other red balls and bring that over and get the game over with? Or do we just go for our two and play one more inning? It definitely would be a tough shot then. Yeah, I, I say take the two, take the sure thing, and go on your way, but that's me. Pat Peasant's a professional gambler also, so... <laughs> Yeah, you know he's a poker player? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, fun fact today. He's actually been on the World Series of Poker. Oh, wow. All right, so they took the shirt thing. Took the two. So it's going to be 15 to 5, I believe. Um, is that right, Luch? 15 to 5? I believe so. Toronto, uh, Palazzo, 7-7-7. Seven, seven, oh, it's 15-6. Seven. Get on the one in the last frame. 15-6, you got it. That's right. You got stuck on five so long. There's Larry Colball calling the score for the crowd. All right, here comes Toronto's point ball, and this could be it, folks, unless uh, Trepepe Consulting comes up with some really, really good points here. And shooting. All right, here comes Pete. And Pete is short, Oof. I believe. Yeah, Pete's short. Yeah, he's had enough. He knows it just isn't going to happen. <laughs> All right, Doug Carter is going to put an X on the ball and see if he can get it out of there. Unfortunately, Trepepe Consulting does not have a, a good point. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look good, folks. No, that was not the right time. Here comes Tim. He's long, very long. Ah, uh, this, this is over. Oh, well. Guys, that was a good run for all of you. Palazzo, congratulations. I know the game's not over yet, but it kind of is. Uh, Pepe Consulting, Pete, Tim, Doug, Natal. Nice run, guys. You played well. Just one of those games where the wheels kind of fell off and you couldn't get him back on. But Natal's going to take one last shot here. Hit to the point in the back wall. All right, took the ball into the back okay. wall. Okay, this isn't... Uh, a little interesting here. Yeah, I mean, he, the towel just made it interesting. You're exactly right. <laughs> Did you call it too soon, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> well, the engineers over here starting on plugging stuff. I say, hey, man, plug that stuff back in. What's the matter with you? <laughs> wow. That's a lucky break there, too. I mean, you, you're just shooting it to shoot, mm -hmm. see where, where it lands, and... Uh, See well, what Pato does here. So now, you know, Tim's long ball come, comes back into play, right? 
Um, you know, as long here comes Jose. Still green. Oh wow. Okay. They still got uh, ball left, right? Ball or two? They have two balls in the back. Yeah. They only need one point to end it. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, for the hometown boys, listen, I, I, I play with Pete and Tim and Doug and, and those guys, and uh, obviously I'm rooting for them. But Toronto, you're a well-respected team, no doubt about it. And once again, live stream is sponsored by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. And uh, thanks again to Pat O'Brien Chevrolet for all that he's done throughout the last many years. I, I don't know how many years it's been, 10, 12, uh, 15 possibly. You know, my memory isn't as good as it once was. What I think happened yesterday actually happened like three months ago. <laughs> um, but uh, Pat, thanks again. You guys uh, have been a great sponsor. And there, there it is. is. That's game, folks. That's it. All right. Well, hey, this is Bob Galise. Luciano Desensi. And we thank you for uh, watching this match um, through live stream, uh, sponsored by Pat O'Brien. And uh, once again, come on down to the Wycliffe Italian American Club next year and watch the Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. We look forward to seeing you. And uh, coming up next, Bob, they're going to be doing the trophies also. Oh, that's so right. Stay tuned for that. That's right. Trophy time. Well, just great tournament over overall. Uh, it's just been a long weekend, and Palazzo has done their part. Have, did not lose a game at all this weekend, and congratulations to them. Yeah, they went undefeated. You're exactly right. And that is not easy to do. No. For people that know bocce and the kind of players that are here, right. the level of play <laughs> that's here, it's not easy to do. No. There's uh, Charlie Al Albertone, the president of the Wickland Italian American Club, with the microphone. Rick Continenza to the left with the hat on, the former president of the uh, Wycliffe INA, as we call it. It's a place that uh, uh, we used to come down a few times a year with uh, the family and uh, cook out, play baseball, football over here. This was in a big open field before we built courts out. All right, there's second place finish. Future Pepe Consulting, and, uh, well, it's, you know, it's a couple of bucks I didn't have before the weekend began. Right, it's still a nice payoff for second place. Uh, right? What is second place again? How much? I, I believe it's around 3000 Okay. Yeah, I think it's, I think I think it's, it's higher, too, because first is 8000 right. it, it may be four it fifty five hundred, okay, something like that. Like that. Okay. Not sure because I didn't get it, so. Right, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice trophies and a uh, little neckwear being handed out. But as we all know, cash is king, and it's coming. Rick is hugging the checks, checks closely to his chest. And there's uh, Trapepi Consulting all getting all together for their photos. There's Great Tim. run by them. Great run by them all weekend. Battling back through the loser's bracket and coming out of there. Yeah, so Tim, Natal, Pete, and Doug, left to right. Good job, guys. Great tournament. Nothing to hang your heads about. You played a great team. And you guys are a great team, too. Just one of them days. Luch, I'm going to leave this to you. My brother's here from Arizona, who I haven't seen in a long time. Okay. And I'm going to go say hello to him. So, uh, thank you, man. It's been a, it's been a pleasure, been Bob. A pleasure. And thanks to the hardworking engineer. Your name is? Luke. Luke? Yeah. All right, Luke. Nice job. Well done.
And there you have it, folks. Palazzo 777 won the 35th Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce, sponsored by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. Just want to say thank you to everyone who helped out in this weekend. It was a great event. You know, hopefully we have more people down next year to come see this. And, you know, the plots are coming next year as defending champs. We'll see how they do. And we'll definitely enjoy this win for the following year. So I just want to thank everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.